Um, hello, my name is Hanji, and for my independent science research, I did one experiment on the effect of grayscale digital screen on film behavior. So everybody owns a cell phone on this campus, and it is no surprise for anyone that um, adverse effects of excessive usage is a real issue. There are these listed adverse effects like reduction in productivity, sleep quality, and a rise in distraction and anxiety, depression, and addiction. So the traditional method of curbing phone usage is through self-discipline, meaning that I will try, say, I want to limit my cell phone usage. I will tell myself I will stop using Instagram after the 15th minute. But that doesn't really work. Um, so an alternative method for self-discipline would be to use phone on grayscale. Grayscale means stripping away the saturation information in one picture and only leaving the luminance information. So during the experiment, a lot of people were explaining, uh, were complaining that they could not view the election map because red and blue look the same on grayscale. Um, and this might be a method to reduce usage by inherently disengage people from the content because they're not interesting to look at. Um, while um, not interfering with viewing the content, um, like words on, gray, on the grayscale screen. So the group of people, 33 participants, were split into two groups. They were randomly assigned to avoid any selection bias. And the first group were told to reduce their phone usage through self-control. The second group was told not to, and not to modify their habits in terms of phone usage. But instead, their phone will be turned into grayscale. They use their phones normally. And there are a couple of phases in this experiment. The first phase is the baseline phase, but, uh, after the recruitment, obviously. So they would just use their phones normally for 10 days. And after that, there's a 19-day period of experiment. So the two groups are um, engaged in the treatment the standard treatment and the alternative treatment. There were two surveys that were sent out. The first survey was a demographic survey at the beginning of the experiment, and the second survey was an end survey in terms of the feedback of the experiment, and also some data that cannot be collected through their phone. Subjects um, would turn in uh, video recordings of their phone screen, so screen recording, instead of taking thousands of screenshots. Um, and uh, these five metrics were um, collected on a daily basis. So there will be screen time, the pickup or checking frequency of their phone, um, the earliest pickup hour. So if you wake up at 7, then you turn on your phone, your earliest pickup hour would be 7 a.m. And if you go back to, uh, if you go to bed late, it will probably be something like 12.05 a.m. The categories of each application so I regrouped all the applications in App Store in 19 categories, and also notification from each app. The data was aggregated in R program, and one sample and two sample analysis were done in Jump. It's a statistical analysis program. Um, the one sample t-test is used to compare the effect in each group, in their own group. So comparing the baseline with the treatment, um, see if the time made a difference. The two sample t-tests that I used was to test the effect of whether there's any differences in between the group, um, the effects of those two groups. So is self-control different from grayscale? And um, the majority of the participants were female and white and teenagers because of the nature of this campus. The one simple t-test yields a significant decrease in total screen time in terms of group two. So the red line, it had um, about 30 minute decrease, whereas group one had an upwards trend, but because of the variance, it was not a significant result. The pickup uh, frequencies for both groups were similar to that of total screen time in that the group two grayscale group had a decrease, but the um, um, self-control group had an increase. 
the two sample t tests show a difference um, between these two groups in terms of the total screen time, the um, time that's spent on shopping for clothing, and the pickup frequency of browsing the internet, so opening up Safari, checking Google Chrome. And I would think that shopping for clothes is not the most appealing thing on grayscale. The end survey. So 80, about 80% 80 of the people reported that they, not, they did not change their computer time um, because I was worried if they would reduce or increase their screen time on the phone, would that matter to the computer usage? And they subjectively reported that they did not. About half of the people in group one use willpower to limit um, their phone usage. And the majority of the participants in group two preferred to never use Grayscale ever again in their life. But they weren't uncomfortable with using it. Um, some of them even reported to reduce eye strain on some level. So based on the baseline data that I collected from all individuals in the experiment, on campus, we had one more hour and three times more pickup frequency than the report that's conducted by rescue time. So on average, we use about four hours, whereas the average in this report was three hours um, among 11,000 users of rescue time, which is a productivity monitoring program. And we pick up our phones about 180 times per day compared to 56, 58 times in the report. Um, this might be due to the high phone infiltration and the dependency among teenagers. And um, because checking behavior is in any sort of addiction an indicator of addictive behavior, it's really problematic that we have such a high checking frequency. Sometimes I see 800 notifications from people's Snapchat. Um, and um, the reason behind this might be the boarding school campus and the teenage um, interaction pattern. There's a fear of missing out, um, FOMO. So people will want to stay on top of each other's update all the time. And there's apparently some issues with self-control because the metrics, both metrics went up. And it is, studied that willpower is not a sustainable method for changing any sort of habit. And subjective reports usually fail to um, predict addictive behavior because people tend to underestimate. So my conclusion from the studies that I've researched was that the self-initiated suppression on the usage of phone might have conflicted with the habits. So it might cause people to give up at the end. They run out out of willpower. So what makes grayscale better? To clarify that, my results only showed the significant decrease in time. The second, second sample of two sample t-tests only showed that because self-control is so terrible, grayscale is better in comparison. And the um, apps that were uh, mainly affected were really eye intensive apps. So people prefer colors and feel pleasure when they're viewing colors. Um, the chromatic stimuli is bigger than the luminous stimuli, which just excites our brain more, the colors. And people tend to spend more time when there's red notifications or red color. So those colors, saturation, distract them from finding important information faster therefore cause them to use their phone for longer times because they're so easily distracted. So for the grayscale group, we could see an effect in terms of the total time that they use their phone less, about 40 minutes less than the self-control group. But the effect of grayscale was not on the level of changing their behavior. Therefore, there was not a significant trend in terms of the pickup frequency. Um, of course, this study is a very small study, and uh, um, there are a lot of variabilities in the groups. The age is skewed highly to the left, uh, 
to the right, so a lot of young people, instead of an over-encompassing population with all age groups and demographics distribution. And there's also some su subjectivity in terms of um, using self-control. It's not a really regulated method. Um, I also have no way to know whether people turn off their grayscale. Actually, two people reported that they turn off their grayscale for reviewing to like for reviewing pictures. Um, but despite these limitations, the study did contribute to the repository of literature because there was only one paper that I could find on the effect of grayscale among college students. So this study contributed a new boarding school environment for younger age group, uh, more categories. The previous study was only on three categories while I had analysis on 19 categories. Um, I also collected pickup frequency and notification number and the first pickup times effect, which were not significant, but I um, tested them. And the um, experimental period was extended to approximately three weeks to capture a more stable behavior. So I think this new method of grayscaling, it already has a lot of anecdotal evidence. And with more data sample, um, I think this could potentially be a promising way to curb phone, excessive phone usage. Thank you. <laughs>